Hey there! I've done videos on how to fine tune a nib, and I, in those videos I show you how to make a nib a bit wetter. Now, if you haven't seen those, if, or if you can't remember, you have two tines in a nib. Uh, let me do, the, do it this way. You have two tines in a nib, and if you increase the gap between those two tines a bit, generally speaking, it will get a bit wetter. Now, what some people do is they exaggerate it a bit, and then the nib will look like this, and two tines are splayed out. When that happens, you get hard starts, you get a nib that dries out very quickly, um, and all kinds of stuff, which is really not nice. Uh, so, I get a lot of questions, and one of the questions I get a lot is how to make a nib drier instead of wetter. It doesn't have to be that your nib looks like this. It can also just be that the gap between the two nib tines is a little bit too wide, and that will make it wet. So, here's a nice book by Mr. Frank Dubio, no longer with us, but he wrote something called The Book. This is referred to as The Book. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not kidding, it's, it actually says so, The Book. Um, and he, he talks about a lot of stuff, one of the things is making a nib wetter. And then he discusses all that, and he sounds fairly, you know, optimistic, and then he comes to making a nib drier, and he writes, Reducing ink flow is more difficult. Bring the tines closer together usually requires the nib to be removed, although some effect can often be had by simply pressing down on the back of the point against a firm surface, blah, blah, blah. This has limited effect and requires experience. I seem to remember that somewhere in the book, he actually says something like, you shouldn't expect too much of making a nib dry yourself, but I may have made that up. I don't recall. I couldn't find it. doesn't matter. What matters is that you can do it. I've just done it. I've recorded a practical bit of this video, and you know you, you can do this too. If I can do it, then you can definitely do it. However, a couple of pointers. First of all, if you're going to do anything with a pen, trying to repair it, trying to make it wetter or drier or better or worse or whatever, you can ruin it. So be careful. Don't start doing this with your Mont Blanc 149. Get a cheap pen. I mean, I'm not saying inexpensive, I'm saying cheap. Get a pen from China, for example, go to eBay. Uh, I bought this pen for 99 cents plus shipping, I think it was $10, and I got a fountain pen. Do this. That is fine. Do this, Delta Dolce Vita, no. Out, in. Out, in. Out, in. You get it? Maybe I should show you one more time. Out, in. Cheap pens, that's how you practice. I'm not trying to, to make fun of anyone here or to try to come across as arrogant. Um, I'm just the best. Um, but you, you really have to be careful with this. Okay. You can do it. Go slow. Check your results a lot. Make sure that you know what you're doing. I'm going to tell you what you should be doing. So you're going to be fine. And you can do this. All right. What do you need? Well, a pen. That's a good start. You'll need a loop. This is mandatory. You cannot do without it. So you need something that has high power magnification. I use 10 times. Works absolutely fine for me. Uh, some people use 20 times or 30 times. I think 20 times, or sorry, 10 times is going to get you very far, far enough. Um, and you probably would like something to buffer because you're going to grab a nib with your fingers and squeeze down hard. The nib is metal. It will not make you bleed, but it can be uncomfortable with, you know, sharp edges and stuff and dig into your skin. I use this, you put that under a carpet, it's simple stuff, but you can also use, I don't know, a bit of cotton, ball, or whatever. Um, as long as it's not too soft, because you do want to be able to exert pressure. There are other ways to do this, I'm sure. This is my method, this is my way to make a nib dryer. I'm going to show you how to do it, and um, that's all there's to it. So, all the usual caveats apply. I cannot take any responsibility for ruined nibs. I've given you fair warning. You're doing this. But I, I want to show you how you can do it as safely as possible. And, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. I'm sure of that. And that is what we're going to do next. Oh, and by the way, some of the things you may need may be some soap. Because you're going to look like this, and there's no way around it. That's all, let's do it. So, let's do this, and um, let's get this show on the road. Okay, so I got a fountain pen, and the fountain pen is inked up. I'm not cheating. It's inked up, there's ink in the converter. But when I do something, when I try to write, it doesn't write. 
I can shake it and I can put ink on the page and then at some point it'll start to write. But this, I'm just finding a, an empty page here, this pen is going to stop writing at some point. And of course I can't demonstrate it here because when I try to do that of course it'll stay writing. But that's alright. Um, if you leave this pen out uh, uncapped for a while it will stop writing. See, there, there we go. I'm not cheating. I've only had it out. You see that for a few seconds. This is not a trick. The thing has stopped writing. Why does it stop writing? What, what, what happened to this pen? Well, what happened is that someone, that is me, tried to make it a bit wetter. And I did that on purpose. I did it wrong. So I'm taking a loop out here. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but the nib, the tines are splayed out. Do you see that you've got the breather hole right there and I'm moving to the nib tips and the, the gap between the two tines gets wider as we go. That is a very bad thing. What you would like a nib to look like, the two tines, is something like this. Now I'm exaggerating, but you would like, um, maybe it's more something like this. So what you would like to see uh, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm a terrible artist, but I'll, I'll try to draw what I'm, what I'm talking about. Just grab the pen here. Um, you would like the two tines to do something like this. And then you have the breather hole right there, and here you have the, the slit. And then you have the two tips. So they should converge, and there should be a gap between the tines. And that gap I'm exaggerating this. If you would magnify it, you would like to see something like this. So, uh, the gap tapers towards the two nib tips, and the two tips, if you would magnify that, they should just not touch. That's what you like. And what, you, what happens is that you've got the feed, and you have ink coming through the feed, the channel in the feed, and because these tines are sort of open, you have the tines, here you have the two tips, and this is open space. Ink is drawn onto the page by capillary action, and that's why it's useful to have this gap there, because ink gets sort of gets gets trapped between those two tines, and then it's it's uh, sort of drawn into the paper, and that's how a fountain pen writes. But if you make your nib look like this, I'm really exaggerating now, the two tines, and they are splayed out, you've got the breather hole right there, the whole capillary action is going to be disturbed. It will, it, you know, it might work for a few words, but that's it, because the ink cannot travel like this from getting from a narrow point to a much wider point. It can do it the other way around. This is no problem. The ink can travel from a wider area to an area that gets narrower, and if you make this area a bit wider, then the, the nib will get wetter. But once you get this, you're screwed. So it's very important to be careful when you're using a brass shim, for example, not to do this. Okay, now we're trying to we're going to try and do some surgery on that pen to make it right again. Um, I get a lot of requests for this, as I've said. So we're going to sit down. We're going to do this. Maybe I should get a little bit more light. No, I don't think that just. Well, okay, maybe it works. Um, what do we want to do? Well, if it's possible at all try and get the nib out. This is a Chinese Jinhao X450. It's easy. Nib and feet are friction fit. You're going to get ink on your fingers. This is how it's going to be. So, you know. Now, there's some excess ink there. Uh, I, I have no problem with just wiping it off a little bit. You don't have to get your fingers inkier than is absolutely necessary. I don't like this light. It's sort of... No. It's overexposing my camera a bit. Okay. So let's have another look at that that nib. The problem may look a little less pronounced now, and that is because the feed is not pushing at the bottom of the nib. So if I were to exert pressure here, I'm sure you can't really see that with this uh, with, with the camera. But if I were to push from the bottom, then the the tines would do that. You see. Um, so how do I get these tines back in alignment? Well, clearly, you can try and take a pair of pliers and just squeeze there. But usually the effect of that is, is very, very small. Uh, you will close them up, then you let the pliers go, and the nibs spring out again. That's, I mean, nib is designed to have some spring. Even the hardest nib, you know, it, it springs back into place. 
So what you would like to do, and that's what we're going to do next, is try to apply some pressure here near the shoulders. I'm not sure how I can see that, but when I, when I push here I can actually see the, the two tines coming together. If you push further below, right there, then you may actually open up the tines a bit. So don't, don't, I mean, you sort of use the shoulders, and if you can't do that, you can always go a bit lower. But I wouldn't go lower to this end, I would go lower to that end. Okay, now, because this can get a little sharp on your fingers, uh, I recommend using something as a buffer. Uh, I like these things. You can you put this under a carpet so that it doesn't slide. You can buy that very cheaply and it just, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice little buffer because it's sort of padded. Okay, so the problem is if I use that then it's going to be difficult to, to show you what I'm doing, but I want to squeeze there so that the tines I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing them there, the tines do this. They cross over. And then I, I apply some pressure and I let them go. And then, I mean, it could happen that you end up like this. Your tines end up like that. So, if I start like this, I'll hold them like this, hold them just a few seconds, and let them go. And then I do it the other way around. So I cross left over right, and then I cross right over left, or any way you see fit, doesn't really matter how you start. Just keep doing this a couple of times. And keep checking your work. So that's why you need that loop. You have to keep checking what's happening. So right now I'm going to do that off camera. I'm just going to have a look at the loop. Sorry, at the nib through the loop, yes, they're definitely splayed. All right. Well, see if I can do this without the buffer so you can see what I'm doing. This is really painful. Ah, yeah, it's really cutting into my skin. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but it's, it's really annoying. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I can't really show you what I'm doing. But just remember, it's very simple. You just want them to cross over. The tines to cross over for just, you know, just a few seconds. One, two three, and then I take them the other way around, one, two, three, ah, even so it's painful, man. The stuff I go through for your people, I mean it's like I'm a masochist. Alright, so, I'm checking out the work I've done, and I've done an excellent job. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but the whole gap between the nib tines is gone. Which means that this nib will either stop writing or be excessively dry. So I've overdone it. But that's okay. You can always open it up a bit. You can use uh, a brass shim. Right now I'm just going to put this on the cap. I, I, I have a separate video on this. It's called Making a Nib Wetter in Seconds or something. Um, I'm just putting it on the cap. And I'm sort of pushing it upwards just a little bit. One, two, three. And the nib is going to point upwards a little bit and that should open up the tines. I'm just checking this again. Yeah, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so I want, I, I had to hold that up to the light. Sorry I was uh, talking off camera. Now, I'm not sure how well you can see this. Let me just switch off that light. Switch off light. Thank you. Um, you see that? Nice gap. I think it's still tapering away from the breather hole a little bit more than I would like. But before I start to do all kinds of weird stuff and repeating the operation, I'm just going to make sure I haven't solved the problem yet. I put it back in there and then I'm going to check it out again. Because, as I said, your um, feed may, may open up the tines a bit more. It's going to put in the converter, and I will just squeeze some ink in there. There we go. Wipe that off. Then I'll grab some paper. You remember that the first time when I, when I showed you how this worked, it didn't write at all. I'm interested to see what happens now. Boom! Writes. And that's a nice wet line. But what I want to know is, if I leave this out, I'm not tricking you. It's open. It's right there. I keep talking. Um, I have to just. I want to see if it dries out again because you saw that that earlier, when I when it was still splayed open. If I just left it there for you know, a couple of seconds, 
it would dry out and it would no longer write. So, uh, it was a lot wetter just now, um, and it was, you know, it, it seemed to write just fine. And I'm just filling up time here, I'm sorry I'm, I'm a, a boring person, uh, but you just have to uh, keep up with me and bear with me and all that stuff. I'm grabbing a new page. It writes straight away. You may hear some scratch. I feel a little bit of a scratch. What you would like to do if you've done this is some tine alignment. You may want to uh, realign the tines a bit. You can just check them out, what, what the alignment is like. I'm uh, holding up that loop again. Loopy, loopy. Where is my nibby? Oh, there we go. Um, that doesn't look too bad to me. You see, they're kind of in alignment. Those two little things, straight line between them. It could be that one is lower than the other, so that if I would look at them like this, they could be like that, or maybe a bit like that. Well, then you just have to realign the tines. And I have videos on, on you know, using a brush shim. They have fine-tuning in the title. And um, you want to make sure, I mean, if they're misaligned, then, then you know, you, you have an issue because... Uh, the nib is going to be scratchy. So I may want to do some alignment, but this looks pretty much okay. And now it has dried out. Now, of course, a fountain pen is going to dry out anyway at some point. And it starts to write again. But I think I want to do a second run of that... that squeezing stuff, because I don't think I've brought the tines close enough together yet. Um, there we go. Just holding up the nib to the light here, so that I can see. I'm, I'm this off camera. Yeah, it's better than it was, but I'm still not entirely satisfied. So, let me just grab that that odd rubber th stuff thing again. Again, I'm just going to do that trick with the the crossing over of the tines. Grabbing it a bit lower now, a bit more towards the the tips. Four, five, yep, and there's some misalignment, there we go, uh, other way around, set the other way around, you will do as I tell you, there we go, one, two, three, four, five, worst pain known to man, <sighs> all right, that looks dry to me. I'm just holding it up to the light again. Yeah, tine alignment. Tine alignment is fine. Um, I'm still there. I'm just holding this to the light. Then I can see a beam of light pass between the, the two tines, you see. Yes. Okay. All right, all right. So now it's almost entirely closed, this gap. I'm not sure whether I can show you that. Um, yes, you can see just a little bit. You see that the gap has gotten narrower, and the two tines touch. So that's not an ideal situation. I'd like the tines to just not touch, unless I like a really dry pen. So I'm going to see whether I have... I like my pens wet, but some people like them dry, and sometimes there's an excellent reason for that. For example, if you fill out a lot of forms, you want stuff to dry quickly, you could use a quick dry ink, or of course you could use a dry pen. Boom! Shakalaka! Pen writes. And it's dry. You can see it's dry because it's skipping. Okay, well here we go, I'm boring you again, just putting down the pen. Um, so one of the, I, I, I enjoy the fact that this is a fairly simple operation, but I should really point out once more that please, please don't start doing this stuff on expensive pens. If you want to try it out, Jinhao X450, excellent pen, has a nice big nib, good to practice on. I got this for 99 cents plus shipping from China, I think I was, you know, 
shipping was much more expensive than the pen, but in all, I think I paid 10 or maybe $11. You get a good pen, you get a decent pen, uh, the pen will work, it'll write, you get a converter with it, you get all the stuff. Um, if, if you haven't seen my review of this, it's, it's metal, making for a pretty robust pen, and I, I like it. Alright, I think that was enough boring. Boom! It writes. And yes, I may do a little bit of time realignment to make sure it doesn't it's not scratchy. But I've made the pen drier than it was. I'm not sure whether you remember uh, where did I do that? No, of course I can't find it anymore. You remember this when it was super wet? Well now it isn't. It's still wet, which is what I like. But it's drier than it used to be. See that? This is already dry. Whereas when I did that earlier, everything was super wet. Even the first bits where I started. So if I try to recreate this... I think you can see that this is drier than that. And I did the exact same thing. So, this is not the easiest thing to do with a fountain pen. It can be scary, and, and not without a reason. Um, just see if I can show you this alignment. Oh, that's nice and sharp. See, it's a very narrow gap between the tides. Narrower than I would like. But if dryness is what you seek, then this is what will accomplish just that. Um, I hope I haven't bored you to death. I, I hope this was a little useful to some of you. And... Um, that's all there's to it. You get inky fingers, but you also get a dry pen. And that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.